keep it on the level. Hello, I'm Breland from Caution Tape Robotics, and today I will be teaching you how to make a gyro turn. Well, we want our turns to be precise, but having it run on time or motor encoder clicks can vary depending on what field or robot you have. And if you use your gyro, it'll be much more consistent as degrees will, won't change. The logic behind this is that you can use a gyro and Use a loop just to check every single time if the gyro sees your desired angle. This, this turn will also account for momentum. And so if it's going at a high speed, it will not overshoot. To code a gyro turn, the first thing that you'll have to do is just make a my block. You can call it whatever, but I'm going to call mine gyro turn. The first parameter that you'll want is what angle you want to turn to, and I'm going to call that heading. Then, the next one that you'll want is how fast you want to go, and I'm going to call it velocity. The last one that you'll want is momentum, or how much you might overshoot by if you were to not, if you were to just cut the motors at the end of your turn once the gyro sees your desired angle. So, the first thing that you'll want in your my block is an if else statement. In this if statement, you will first check which way you're turning. You would and you would use if your heading or where you want to be turning to is bigger than what your gyro sees, meaning if you're turning left. In here, you will want a while loop. For the while loop, it will just be if heading minus momentum Sorry, while heading minus momentum is greater than what your gyro sees, meaning while there's still a few more degrees to go, and you minus your momentum to make up um, as to not overshoot, meaning it, the loop will cut out before it actually reaches the heading, it'll cut out when it reaches the momentum instead. In this while loop, you're going to set the motor velocities to velocity. And then you're going to spin both of your motors. And because this is a left turn, you want your left turn your left wheels to be going in reverse and your right wheels to be going forwards. In the L statement, it means that you are turning right. So in this one, you're also going to be using a wow loop. But this time, it'll be wow heading plus momentum because your heading will most likely be negative. Is less than what your gyro sees, because if you're turning right, it means that your gyro sees something higher than what your heading is. In here, you'll want to do the same thing as last time, where you set both of your motor velocities 
to just your um, your speed variable, or in my case, velocity variable. And you'll just want to spin your right and left motor. But this time, you want your right motor to be going backwards and your left motor to be going forwards. And after that, you'll just want to stop both your motors And that is your gyro turn. The first thing that you'll want to do to use the gyro turn is calibrate the gyro. This is so that the gyro is as precise as possible for your turns. To use it, I will show you how to make a square. This will be using the P-straight that I made in an earlier video. The first thing that you'll want to do is just go forwards. Let's say a thousand motor clicks. We'll be heading at zero. The velocity will be 50. And the KP can be two. As for the turn, the heading will be 90 degrees because the angles on the squares are 90 degrees. The velocity will be 20 so that it's as precise as possible and you won't have to rely on momentum. And the momentum will be three. Repeat this process, but the heading will change for each. Now, the P straights heading will be 90 instead of zero. And the second gyro turn will be turning to 180 degrees. And for the last gyro turn, it will not be zero. It will be 360 because it's rotation in degrees, not just heading in degrees. And that is how to make and use a gyro turn. Even if you were to slightly tap, or if the robot were to change heading, the P straight in turn will correct it, making sure that the robot stays on track.